Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Let's look at these two limit problems. Um, if you just plug in the four into all the x's that you see here, then you can see that the numerator is just going to be a non-zero. Uh, it's going to be approaching a non-zero number because if you plug the four in here, you are getting three minus four. So the numerator is approaching negative one, right? But if you up uh, plugging the 4 into the x in the denominator. Do you see what's going on here? If you do that, then you're going to get 16, right? If you're plugging the 4, that's 16. Minus 2 times 4, that's minus 8. Minus 8, minus 8. You are actually having the denominator approaching 0 for both problems. And so I'm putting the two problems side by side, the left side limit and the right side limit, because I also want to show you the comparison between the two problems. Um, this is not really the same thing as the previous videos that I have shown you because um, those were limits at infinity, right? These two are actually called infinite limits. Okay, so now how do we do this problem? First, we should try to factor the denominator, right? So let's do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just factor... Um, the denominator so what about the top the top just don't bother with the top for now just copy okay and then if we factor the denominator then we are going to be getting okay so there are two of them one of them is x minus right four and then the other one is going to be x plus two Okay, so do a quick check. We get x squared and then plus 2x minus 4x, which will give you negative 2x. And then, yeah, so negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Same thing here, right? Same thing for this problem. I'm just going to just going to copy that to the other side. So that will save some time. And it just happens that I need to adjust something right here. As you can see, x is approaching 4 from the right side. So that's the right side limit. Okay, so now you may say, what do we do next, right? What do we do next? Um, <clears throat> what happens is that we need to consider each part here. So we need to consider the three minus X. We need to consider the X minus four. We need to consider the X plus two. And then same thing for this side. Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, if we directly now plug the 4 into the x's, then you can actually see that um, it's going to have the form that looks like this. The 3 minus, okay, so I'm going to change all the x's into a blank so that I can fill in the blank, right? So let's do that. We have the x minus 4 and then uh, x plus 2. Okay, and then actually we are going to do the same thing on the other side of the problem. So I'm just going to copy that on the other side here. Okay, I think that looks good. So now what do we do? Um, what we are going to do is that we are going to plug in um, the 4 into the blanks, right? And remember, this is not equal to 4. X is not equal to 4. It's actually X approaching 4 from the left side. So it's going to be a number that's less than four, but I'm going to just put four here, four here, and then also four here, right? With the superscript of the minus sign indicating the direction on how we are approaching the four. And then on this side right here for this problem, we are going to be approaching four from the right side. So it will be four with the superscript plus. Okay, so now let's look at this two situation. Hmm. Um, when we have three minus four, we are just going to be getting a negative one. And remember, that's not exactly negative one. We are actually having this quantity, the x, approaching four from the left side. And so the numerator is actually approaching negative one. Okay, it's not exactly negative one. So we are getting negative one at the top. And what about the bottom? The bottom is that we are having four, right? Um, approaching four from the left side, subtracting the actual number four. Do you see what's going on here? Because when we are approaching four from the left side, we are actually having a sequence of numbers that are less than four. 
So when we take all those numbers and we subtract the four, and then you can actually see what's going on. All those numbers are less than four. So when we subtract the four, we are going to get a negative number. And that is actually approaching zero from the left side. Okay, so that's approaching zero from the left side. So times, right? Because that operation right here is multiplication. What about this thing here? Um, X is approaching four from the left side and then you're adding the two, that's really just the six. Okay, we are not going to worry about the direction because when you're really close to six, whether you're on the right side of the six or whether you're on the left side of the six, it's still going to be positive, right? So the only thing that we need to worry about whether it's on the left side or the right side is the zero because zero is the special number that when you're approaching zero on the right side, you are having a positive number. When you're approaching zero from the left side, you are getting negative numbers, right? So that's why we need to indicate the sign of this number here. And then, so you know that if, <clears throat> if, you, um, if you have six times something that's really close to zero, that's actually going to give you something also close to zero. But then do you know what's going on here? Because this is a negative number. So the bottom, as you can see, right, is also approaching zero. When you multiply by six, it's still going to be approaching zero from the left. So it will still be a negative number at the bottom, right? The six times a negative number is going to be a negative number. So now how do we come up with the answer? Just imagine that you take negative one and divide it by a really um, a really small number, right? Um, that's while well, you can actually say that that's a, <clears throat> it's a negative number that's numerically small, that's, that's arbitrarily close to zero. Then in this case, what happens? Imagine that you plug in 0.1, then you're gonna get 10, if you're playing 0 0.01, you're gonna get 100. So you can see that when you divide by a, um, a number whose absolute value is really close to zero, you're actually getting a larger and a larger number. So the answer is going to be infinity. And you may say, is that positive infinity or negative infinity? Look at the signs. The top number is pos uh, the top number is negative, not positive. The top number is negative, the bottom number is negative, so if they're both negative when you divide them, you are going to be getting a positive number. So the final answer is positive infinity. Okay, now when we do the other problem, which is having a similar situation as what you get here, right? Then what really happens is that if you put it in the symbolic form, then you're gonna get negative one in the numerator. But then what do we get at the, in the, uh, the denominator? We are going to be getting zero and you are approaching zero from the right side. Why? Because four with the plus, that means we are approaching four from the right side. So all those numbers that you're picking, right? Are greater than four. So when you take something that's greater than four minus the four, you are going to be getting a positive number. And what about the other factor? The other factor is just the six. Okay, so almost the same thing, except that the, the difference is right here. And then um, what does this look like? This looks like, this looks like negative one over, right? What do we get at the bottom? It's going to be a positive number. Why is it positive? Because this number that's arbitrarily close to zero is positive. Six is also positive. When you multiply two positive numbers together, you are gonna be getting a positive number. And that's going to be really close to zero. Same situation, you are either going to be getting an uh, infinity or negative infinity. And what happened is that if you look at the signs, you are taking a negative number divided by a positive number. So the final answer will just be negative infinity for this problem. And that really just means that both limits, right, do not exist. But because we can actually tell where the function is heading, what that function is approaching to, then we are still putting down the two results right here. But it doesn't mean that they're actual numbers. It's really just saying that when x is approaching four from the left side, the function is getting larger and larger in the y direction. And then when x is approaching four from the right side, then the function is what is 
going down, right? If you're graphing the function, then you can see that it's getting smaller and smaller. Or you can say that it's getting uh, numerically larger and larger in the negative direction. Okay, so that's it for this problem or for these two problems. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe my channel and share my videos to others. If we can be support and make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video. I